Hi guys. Hey everyone. Welcome to Make 2 and the next episode in our Fallout Shelter series. So I've invited you to come in with me on this episode because we have a few things to talk about in terms of catastrophe in the game. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. I think <laughs> you've coped with catastrophe in this game more stoically than I. Okay, well basically in my last video I was feeling pretty confident about the direction of my game and my next thing that I wanted to do was hit like 70 people. Oop. Jeez, look how big you are. Yeah, so the next thing I wanted to do was hit... This is massive. Who's this person? Let's drag her in. Collect her. Yeah, so the, the next thing I wanted to do was hit like 70 people and be able to build the garden. And what I found out was that if you have rapid population growth, you quickly outpace your resources. So suddenly, like within the span of minutes, my food, power, and water just plunged into the red. And I'm going to show you a screenshot. Happiness went down to 12%. I was at like 90 and it went down to 12% in the space of like minutes because I just didn't have enough food or water or power to, you know, sustain the population that it had gotten to. And it, yeah, so what I had done was I would created like a lot of training rooms because I thought why not, you know, use the training rooms to kind of increase people's skills. And I kind of think that the training rooms were a drain on power. And so I then didn't have enough power to also help out with the... Ugh, I hate these things. Yeah, me as well. Yeah, so you've, got, you've got some stuff to talk about in terms of the rad roaches. Yeah, so I had a rad roach. I, I had everyone at 95% happy. I only had 20 dwellers. And, well, I wasn't quite as... Jeez. I wasn't quite as quick at getting people in with guns because I don't have very many guns. Well, I didn't I have anybody have... with guns in this room. Well, it also took... I, I brought in two people with guns. It didn't work. They got killed. Other people got killed. <laughs> it moved. It spread throughout another major room to my power generator. I didn't know that if you have a dead person with a gun, you, if you get rid of that person, you can take their gun back and give it to somebody else. So I wasn't very good at managing an all-out catastrophe. They went to like 20% happy from 95%. Half of them died and were just lying on the floor as corpses, which the rest of the people didn't like. <laughs> and then I just spent a long time trying to get everyone back up and I just gave up and deleted the game. <laughs> yeah, my tactic before was to go into the game, collect my stuff and exit the game before a bad thing could happen. And this one was like, oh no, I want to play for a bit and actually enjoy the game having watched your video. Not to blame you. And then I did that, <laughs> roach infestation, everyone died. Yeah. Well, so you I mean, have dealt well, with disaster, and now you're flashing. You're like I said, eighty-eight percent, eighty-eight people. But like I said, like my, you know, happiness went down to twelve percent, and yeah, it took me like a couple of hours of just consistent playing the game to bring the happiness level back up to above fifty percent. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was like, I'm not giving up, and so basically, what I did was I deleted all the training rooms that I built because you know, just in case that helped. And I went ahead and built more power, food, and water rooms just to bring those levels back up. And then finally, when things got sustainable again, I felt like I had enough space to do some remodeling of the vault. And I actually think I was really lucky in that during that entire two hours, I don't think I had any other disaster breaking out. Like... I was actually just waiting for, you know, another rad roach infestation or raiders to attack. Because if that had happened, I think my vault would have been done for. Because everybody's health bars were way down. I had run out of stim packs and radaways, and one disaster would have probably tipped it over into the edge. I do wonder if everything was in the red. Cause maybe that was considered a disaster. Because if you've got mm -hmm. a rad roach infestation... Like, I don't think you can have two at the same time. I don't think you can have raiders and a rad roach at once, or a fire. You know, everyone goes into a different mode when you say you've got a fire. You can't do other things in your in your um, shelter. 
So maybe because everything was super low, that was considered a disaster, in quotes. Hopefully that was programmed into the game on purpose, where, you know, you can't get another random disaster if you're already kind of on the brink of extinction. So I don't know, either that was lucky or it was on purpose. So history out of the way, you're now doing well. Can you show me what's been going on? Like, it seems you've got some people at super high levels as well. What's the highest level dweller? Ooh, that's a good question. Levels 47. Wow. <laughs> well, these first two up here are, I think they came in already at a high level because they were lunchbox dwellers okay. added to the town. The rare ones. And the people below that are... Yeah, so yeah. 26. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Some people are unhappy, though, because I still need to kind of go through and assign people correctly. But yeah, let's do a little tour of the changes to my vault. Okay, so basically, I can't even remember what I have changed and added since the last video, but why don't we just start at the bottom? I think you've added two levels. Yeah, two levels. So down here at the bottom, I've got a garden and one of the new water purification rooms in progress. I'm gonna keep expanding those so that I can keep the resource bars up. And what's above the water treatment room? This is the new power nuclear reactor room. Ooh, yeah. Fancy. And so Does kind that of still need strength or does that need intelligence? Strength, yeah. Okay. So I think I'm going to basically try and keep the resource rooms kind of grouped together just for aesthetic reasons, although I know Apparently, resources flow better, or power flows better to rooms that it's closer to. So, really? yeah, apparently, you know, if I did run out of power, which I don't plan to ever again, by the way, because that was a disaster. But apparently, if I, you know, had run out of power, then the rooms furthest away would shut down first. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. I, have, I did notice that. Yeah. Oh, so, and, uh, yeah, that is an issue in this top corner. Yeah, so this, obviously, these... This is my fully upgraded med bay, fully upgraded science lab. And then beneath that, I've built another med bay and another science lab because I wanted to increase the capacity of my stim packs. So I think I'd said in the last video, it could only get up to 15. And unfortunately, that is a overall cap in the game. You can't distribute stim packs and right -aways, for instance, to anything but non-healthy dwellers. So it's not like I could just select a dweller now and give them, you know, like I'm tapping on the stim packs and you see the, the number is not changing. But if you give it to them, they use it up if they're not at full health. Exactly. So basically, yeah, I just collected three right and they didn't go anywhere because the max is 35. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to have more, I'd have to build more med bays and science labs, which, oh, I see. you know, I may well do. But... Um, yeah, so that basically is the uh, additions to the vault. I think, you know, there's another, another is this water? Yeah, another water um, treatment room there. And, you know, again, I had to kind of just go through and add as many of those as I could in order to keep the resource bars up. And as you can see, I'm still only at 75%, despite, you know... Yeah, and how are you doing with finding things like special equipment like clothing and armor. Yeah, guns. so what happened to the person that I just brought in with her combat armor? I mean, she's somewhere. Yeah, so basically my strategy that I mentioned in the last video of just sending out whoever I wanted to, sometimes I just do that. Like I have to occupy dwellers, otherwise they're unhappy. So. If I've got dwellers who can't fit into a room somewhere, I'll send them out into the wasteland. And it doesn't matter to me what level they are or what kind of armor and weaponry they are carrying with them. Because if you send them out into the wasteland, they will level up anyway. They'll acquire experience, you know, based on whatever experiences they encounter in the wasteland. And as soon as you notice them, you know, having trouble with health or radiation, you just hit the recall button. And as soon as they are on their way back, they're then free from any further damage. So hmm. it's kind of a low risk to send dwellers out into the wasteland. But let's see. So I'm now at 18, 
59 caps and one of my objectives is to merge three pairs of rooms together and I'm at two out of three and I want to go ahead and build another water treatment room. And even though my water bar is pretty high right now, I want to build another water treatment room just to fill up that gap there. I can't afford to build <laughs> another garden room right now. Although maybe I could, maybe I could actually. Maybe I should wait. Do you think I should wait? Because... How much do, how much do they cost? 1800 is the extra water treatment thing. Right, which I don't really need right now. Another no. garden will be 2400, so that's pretty close. Maybe yeah. I can just well, let's talk wait about, a little bit. Yeah, there's one thing that bugged me when I was trying to deal with my rad which is trying to... And I'm playing on the iPad, you're playing on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. But grabbing somebody and Ugh. pulling them. Yeah. Because it doesn't know if you're... So irritating. ...holding the person or pulling them around, like... You're holding the person moving to a room, or whether you're just scrolling around the screen. Yeah, sometimes you can't even select... Like, I had a rad roach infestation, I was trying so hard to tap on this dude so I could drag him into the room, and the game just would not, like, recognize what I was doing. I mean... And you lose valuable seconds of dealing with a disaster when something like that happens. Yeah. It'd be nice if you could select people from the, you know, the dweller viewer and then just say, like, move, and then tap on the room you want them to go to. That what? would be a different, like, not the only way, but that would be an additional way. The other thing that annoys me is you can't see who has a gun and who has a special outfit from Yeah, from the screen. This, this screen? Yeah, there's yeah. no way of knowing. You can see, I guess, by the blue stuff. Right. It means they're wearing something, but you yeah. don't know who has a weapon. Exactly. So he's like, I need a weapon in here now, and mm -hmm. I had, like, three weapons for my entire yeah. like, smaller dwelling than you. That was really frustrating. Yeah, well, that that's maybe it's one of the built-in challenges of the game to you know try and manage having many dwellers and keeping track of who has what. But you maybe. know, it is a bit um, irritating. And where the heck is this chick with the combat armor? Anyway, I completely lost her, and she should probably be assigned somewhere helpful. So. Let's see if I can find her while I'm busily trying to upgrade my caps. Well, there was the other thing that we wanted to talk about. Oh, look at all the this her. ladies. That's her. So, why don't you... Yeah, I think you need more food, people. True. We were also talking before about... Oh, the pregnant ladies. Okay, yeah. yes. One other kind of gripe I have about the game is that, like, it really makes the women kind of useless in that you don't ever want to give women combat armor or weapons because as soon as they get pregnant, they can't use those anymore. So it, it kind of, like, gives you more incentive to give that stuff to the male dwellers, which, like, I mean, come on, I'm a woman and I don't really like a game that, you know, thinks women are useless. But does it put the items back into inventory just automatically? If they're wearing a weapon and I then don't, get pregnant? I don't know that it does, But even fact. if they have it, they if there is a, a disaster, they run away yes. to protect the baby, I guess. But why can't they just... Stay and fight. Stay and fight. And maybe yeah. they can't get take damage, like kids can't get, take damage, can they? But just have them, yeah. Yeah, just be something useful, right? Yeah. Yeah. That would be, the other solution would be have men getting pregnant to each other is a bit more unrealistic. So yeah, I think just have women who are pregnant fight. Yeah, and like still be able to wear at least, you know, armor yeah. and all of that stuff so that... It just stretches. I know, I mean, yeah. So that's one gripe I have about the game and am not too happy about. But anyway, okay, we're very close to hitting 2400 and I will build another garden here to merge with that and then see what happens when I hit that goal with the caps. Alrighty, raiders are attacking. Yeah, they've made it in. They're stealing, gee, all you resources. Well, whatever. Even though they're only in this one room. I think they'll get dealt with in the end. They're gonna break past. And then... Wow, they're really taking a hit. Maybe the raiders do get... I think they get stronger. ...stronger as you continue playing. And by the way, I've also added... I swapped out the original guards I had for dwellers with a higher level, just in case that made a difference. But I don't think it has. I mean, they're supposed to have more energy bar. The energy bar is supposed to be bigger or something. Really? 
at higher levels? That's what, that's I'm what not it says in the, in the manual. I'm not seeing that. Did you see how fast their energy bars drain? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think one of those who just um, might need some top up of health from mm, the restaurant at the top. I guess. <laughs> might as well. It's so low, though. Like, as they, soon as they, they level up, then oh, they get yeah. their health back. So okay. I think I'm going to chance leaving them alone. I've already added stim packs to these two guards who are essentially not that great. And we're now at 2700 caps, so I'm going to go ahead and build another garden to merge with that and hit that objective. So to here's the garden. 100 caps. Yep. Build that there. Merge three pairs of rooms together. Completed. Happiness has gone up to 76%. Awesome. Ugh, successfully rushed 12 rooms. Wow. Mm. Okay. That should be interesting. Do you, you, I think, was it in the last video or was it offline that you got one lunchbox? Yeah, it was offline. I got one lunchbox. Yeah, I mean, you've been playing a lot more than me, but I think I got, after the first couple of hours of playing, I got zero. <laughs> really? Wait, in terms of like starting the game completely? Yeah, I got like two, I think, very early on. Which neither of them gave me anything super special. Huh. Like, I think, a gu I think I got a good gun and some armor. And then after that I didn't get any. Yeah, I would say that was probably an unlucky turn. And I, I know that I had a very lucky first few hours with the game. So, yeah, there's always the option of just restarting and yeah. trying to see whether you do better with a new vault. Yeah, I guess you have three vaults. You can always start three and see mm -hmm. which one has the best luck. With yeah. the initial bits, obviously, super easy to do that. Those first initial things. Yeah. So let's see. Who can I drag into the newly expanded garden? Are you got all these people on coffee breaks. Exactly. Well, the, they just keep breeding, you know. So <laughs> that's because like, you've left them all in the rooms together. You could just put single sexes, it, like all men in one bedroom. Living quarters, all women in, a, in another. This is true. I could do that. Because um, at this point, I'm a little bit wary of, you know, expanding the population too quickly because of what happened. Yeah, I'd say do that. And then my other armchair advice would be do that so you've got more people making energy, water and food. So then you can go back and build your you know, strength exercise room or something, and then you can get all the people who are in the bedrooms, make them stronger. That's true. Yeah. Maybe we'll still, have you tested this well, thing? Well, now I have no money, though. <laughs> yeah. So. You had this um, comment, I think, on the last video, of if you breed people who have... Mm. Like, if you breed strong people together or charismatic people together, their offspring will be charismatic or strong. Yeah, have higher levels. Yeah, apparently. Higher, yeah. To be honest, I would like to, and I will try doing that. It's just quite a lot to kind of keep track of with everybody though so like you can see with 88 people I'm having a hard enough time like grabbing somebody to bring him down to the garden so yeah but I will try okay here I can add somebody all right so this might be a good place to pause the uh, episode and yeah see how much I can accomplish or how much damage I can do to my vault for the next episode. Well, thanks for inviting me. It's been really fun seeing you play, and... I think you should try again. I know that you had a hard time. Basically, when we talk about our disasters, yeah, it was like within minutes. Yeah, yeah. I was, we were sitting on the couch, I was playing it, <laughs> you were watching, everything went wrong, I started crying like a little boy. No, you didn't. <laughs> you, were, you were cursing like um, a really pissed off person. Yeah. It was not, not nice to see. And then I deleted the game in a fit of rage. So I don't know, but I did just get a new game. So I think I want to play that rather than this. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully, ugh, see, it's so hard to just pick the right person and drag. Yeah. But are you finding it fun? It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I definitely want to continue on and see what use I can get out of training rooms, especially now that, you know, I'm... Um, I'm good with power and water and food. So maybe in the next episode, I'll have some training rooms built up. Cool. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, episode four of Fall Without Shelter, please give it a thumbs up. Let us know what you think or any tips and tricks or how you're doing in your game in the comments below. 
and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with our latest Fallout Shelter videos as well as much, much more. Thanks for watching.